His name is Makajan, which means Batman, master of the night. So vast is his territory that he spends a large part of his day patrolling it, meticulously leaving his scent on every point that, to him, represents a crucial landmark. The lions disregard his carefully laid, scented footprint, but they're not the animals he worries about right now. He's on the trail of a young female, Ntombi. She's been an estrus for several days, but she does need his strong genes to father her cubs. She spots him first. He hasn't seen her yet, but he follows her trail. By instinct, she walks away. Leopard encounters are never easy. A hyena carefully follows their moves. Makajan is sure that Ntombi is an estrus, but she's not sure she wants to accept his favors. He doesn't know that. He can still smell her inviting scent. Makajan realizes that he's not going to win her over and leaves. The two leopards go their separate ways, back to the solitary lifestyle typical of a leopard. They leave behind their unique cat smell, and the hyena rolls in it to mask her own. If she smells of leopard, she might be able to get close enough to one to steal his kill. Ntombi is gone, but her scent lingers. He calls her, hoping that she hasn't gone far. But his low rasping is drowned by some unruly sounds. Hyenas are ripping an impala kill apart. But this isn't their kill. They stole it from the old Shabeli lion. Irritated, he takes it back. His roar is a powerful weapon. It scares off scavengers like these and wards off enemies. But how long before the three brothers realize that the old male's roar goes unanswered? How long before they understand that the neighboring land is owned by only one male? They are young and new to this game of territories, and for now, they are happy with their newfound kingdom. The complexity of the lion's territories is lost to the larger animals of Africa. To giraffes, it makes no difference whose turf they're on. Lions are dangerous anywhere. When they find them, they keep them in their sight. For the elephants, that's not good enough. Lions kill their newborns, so the further they make them run, the better. Elephants have seen generations of lions come and go. They've walked through the invisible boundaries that change with the strength of the reigning king.
All this is unimportant to them. Their survival depends on the best food and water that they can find over an expanse of land that stretches far beyond these lions' territories. They're on the Three Brothers' land now, only because it has the best source of water around. And nearby, there is an enormous expanse of bushland to feed. The old Shabelle male takes some time out with his pride. At his age, he tires quickly. His joints are stiff and riddled with arthritis. He doesn't hunt with the pride anymore. For the two young lionesses and the five cubs, this is a problem. They depended on the experience and strength of the old male and his three lionesses. Now, the females are gone and the old male is tired. The Shabeles are in trouble. The two remaining lionesses used to take the older one's lead. Now they find themselves alone, having to provide for a handful of almost fully grown cubs with matching adult appetites. At every opportunity, they try to go for buffaloes. Just two lionesses against a whole herd. The odds are against them. Inevitably, the lionesses lose. Despite being almost two years old, the cubs are of no use. They just don't know how to hunt because they missed out on some crucial guidance, usually given by the adults in the pride. It takes special skills to hunt buffaloes. Skills that the three brothers perfected during their nomadic years in Kruger. The sisters are desperate to be accepted by these males. They try all the tricks they know. Flirting seems to work. But the male is not sure what to make of this. Encouraged by her sister's progress, a second lioness moves closer. And her young son follows her. He shadows her in the hope of getting her protection while trying to get close to the carcass. The sisters' arrival has unsettled the brothers. They are unsure of what to do, fight them or accept them. The female scent is distracting. Quietly, one of the lionesses starts to feed. Her sister tries to move in too, but she's too fast for the lion's liking. Meanwhile, the one feeding eats as quickly as she can. And the male makes sure that the lionesses see who owns this kill. Having learned from her mistakes, the mother moves closer, slowly.
Her son follows. But he is getting too close. The brothers have had enough and take out their frustration on each other. Undeterred, the lioness carries on feeding. But soon her time is up. The males reclaim their meal. Nearby, my own kill, well secured above ground. Being alone has its advantages. He doesn't have to share with anyone. But he has a following of intruders that try to steal from him. Hyenas are Makajan's plague. Almost every time he has a kill, they find him. And they are very patient thieves. He feeds into the night, dropping nothing but crumbs. Every little scrap counts. Eventually, the carcass will come apart and fall. But Makajan will not allow the hyenas to be around for that. Not many leopards would single-handedly take on a group of scavengers his own size. But he is a powerful cat, and the hyenas know when to back down. He settles at the bottom of the tree to ensure they do not return. The night was good for the cats of Timbabati. The Shibelis killed a water buck. It's not a large prize, weighing only a third of a buffalo, but it will provide enough food for the two lionesses and their cubs. The youngest one is learning how to get her own piece of the meal. Her older cousin is more cautious. The little one submits to her mother, but she doesn't back down. The older cub is too cautious. As a result, she doesn't get any food. Not on this side of the carcass. The youngest one managed to get a bone. This time, it has more meat on it. The water buck provides just enough meat to go round. But soon, the Shabellis will be hungry again. Maintaining a territory is hard work, even harder when doing it alone. Despite the difficulties, the old Shabelli male has done very well on his own. But he's old and tired. His days as the king of his territory are numbered. It's a sad prospect, but a reality that all lions need to face towards the end of their lives. If he's lucky, he will have a dignified send-off, walking away alone to rest in peace. If he's not, he will face a bloody battle with the three young brothers. But the brothers have others that are keeping them distracted. The 
three sisters have worked out the winning formula to free food. And now they have an extra card to play. One of the lionesses is an estrus. She's only at the beginning and not ready to mate yet. But the change in hormones produces a scent that the males find inviting. The lioness is careful of the sudden attention and tries to keep the male at a distance. At the same time, she's hungry and wants to get close to the kill. But the other brother is not happy about this. The males seem to have mixed reactions to her altered state. This one finds her a threat, while the other one can't keep his eyes off her. A hyena arrives on the scene, but she doesn't stay long. There are too many lions around. Each brother protects his own prize. One the lioness, the other the kill. The hyena goes past unnoticed. Between the lions and the leopards, she's sure to find another kill. With patience and a great sense of smell, she patrols their territories from corner to corner. A leopard's skill is to kill swiftly and feed quietly to avoid attracting such scavengers. Ntombi has killed again. She returns to the tree where she stashed a Dacre carcass. First, she checks that she hasn't been followed. Then, she climbs the enormous tree. The kill is still intact and far from the reaches of scavengers. And yet, Ntombi is nervous. She keeps looking to make sure she is alone. But for reasons only known to her, she's not convinced that this is the best place to settle to eat. She's killed an unusually large animal for her size. The Dacre is almost as big as she is. She drops it to the ground. Then she moves it under a thorn bush. Finally, she settles to feed. The cats of Timbavati hunt and kill day and night. Some, like Ntombi, kill often. Others, like the Shibelis, are not so lucky. The old male hasn't eaten for a week. Lately, he prefers to scavenge from other predators, and he'll try everything he can to steal a meal.
Route in Africa has its advantages, but climbing trees is not one of them. He'll have to forfeit this chance to eat. One of the most important attractions to a certain territory is the food it holds. Grass, trees and water attract the great herds. And the lions have a varied menu to choose from at their doorstep. All they have to do is catch it. But the Shabeli pride has had no luck in hunting. The cubs are the ones that suffer the most. Although they are weak and tired, they must keep moving, searching for food. Finally, a lucky break. The Shabelis find the young female elephant. She died an untimely death. Her one-ton body provides the Shabelis with the jackpot. The old male joins in. The pride let him feed first. They manage to tear the elephant's skin in one of the thinnest places. Most of it is three centimeters thick, but under its legs, it is paper thin. With such a large meal, the lions can afford to take their time in feeding. They will eat for the next seven days and take time out to groom and cuddle. During this time, the old male will alternate between feeding here and patrolling the rest of his territory. When he finishes his turn, the cubs and their mother take theirs. The little cub takes her chance, but, as usual, her mother doesn't allow her to eat. Vultures spot the dead elephant from kilometers away. The little cub tries again. She is relentless, but her mother will not let her get a bite. The lioness even tries to stop the older cub. Finally, the grumpy mother walks away. the little one can feed in peace. Every day, more vultures arrive on the scene. They wait patiently for the lions to finish with the elephant carcass. They know that eventually, the lions will leave. Nevertheless, they test the lions. But the cubs keep an eye on them, especially the youngest one. She loses interest quickly and gives her cousin a cuddle. For the first time in many months, the cubs are well fed. They regain their strength and have enough energy to play. By the sixth day, insect-eating birds find the carcass. They are here to feed on maggots. 
Usually, their window of opportunity to pick out insects at a kill is very small, if at all. They cannot feed when the lions or the vultures are eating. But here, they get a chance while the lions rest. It's a little bird feeding party. In the brothers' camp, the tables have turned. Now, it's the males that have to be careful in approaching the females, even though they have accepted them. Again, one of the brothers follows the lioness in Estris. He carefully walks closer, but she will allow him to mate with her only when she is ready. Submits. <coughs> Mating is quick. In between sessions, the lines rest. Now that she's consented, she doesn't give him the runaround anymore. They will mate several times an hour for the next few days. During this time, she will probably mate with all three brothers to ensure that the strongest genes will father her cubs. With this act, the three sisters that left the old Chabelli male cement their bond with the brothers. But there is a casualty in For the youngster, his mother and her sister's newfound partners pose a serious threat. To have any chance of surviving, he will have to leave the brother's territory. He smells his mother's familiar scent. Desperately, he calls her. He looks for her. He listens for her familiar call. But she'll never respond. His mother is gone forever. Eventually, he resigns himself to his new fate. The hyenas seem to sense his vulnerability. They come in close for a better look. With no one on his side, his life will be a struggle to find food and just to keep alive. 
he leaves his home, a great piece of land owned by some impressive cats. Makajan and Ntombi have gone their separate ways. He continues to be the undisputed leopard master of his territory. Ntombi retreats back into her secretive domain. In the brother's land, a new chapter is about to begin. With such strong fathers and a prime piece of land, the cubs are guaranteed to have a great start in life. On the neighboring territory, the old male leaves forever. His reign is over, and he goes off to a private and dignified end. Without a father and strong male protector, the Shabelli cubs walk into an uncertain future. On African soil, old territories are lost and new ones found. To a lion, nothing is more important than holding his own. A lion's territory. <coughs> On African soil, territories mean everything. No other animal knows the importance of owning one more than the lions. Occupy a territory and you own the animals that trespass on it, their lives at the lion's mercy. Defend the territory and the pride can rest in peace. But let your guard down, and all could be lost in the blink of an eye. On African soil, a lion knows that his life depends on the territory he owns. It is the king's pride. For millennia, lions have carved their territories on Africa's vast and ancient ground. Through time, the pressures of the modern world shrunk these wild expanses to isolated wilderness areas. The last frontiers of true Africa. In South Africa, Kruger is the largest. And on Kruger's western flank, an old male lion owns a prime piece of land in an area called the Timbavati. His family is the Shubeli pride, with two lionesses and five cubs. 
He leaves his pride most nights to patrol his 150 square kilometer territory. It takes dedication to make sure no enemy crosses the boundaries. But some nights, he gets distracted. Muffled sounds give away that a warthog is in its den. The old lion digs to make the hole bigger and tries to get within biting distance of the animal. Determined to get to the warthog, he digs into the night. But his old muscles are not what they used to be. After a few hours, he gives up. He leaves the morning shift to the pride. While one of the lionesses and the older cubs dig, the youngest one keeps herself busy. She's almost six months old and still supplements her diet with her mother's milk. For the rest of the pride, it's a waiting game. Listening for the slightest sound. Digging to enlarge the hole. Waiting. The youngest cub takes the best seat. Within minutes, the boar is torn apart. Seven lions fight for their share. The two lionesses bully the cubs and take the largest pieces. The little one tries to grab what she can, but her mother is not sharing. When it comes to feeding, there is no love between lions. The young cub learns this quickly. The 40 kilogram warthog is too small to be a proper meal. Each lion grabs what it can get. In less than an hour, the kill is devoured. All that the youngest cub managed to grab is a bone. The old male is now 13 years old. He's held onto this great piece of timber body for almost nine years. In lion terms, this is unheard of. A tenure usually lasts no more than five or six years. He has been a strong leader for the Shabili pride. But times are changing. A few months ago, three lionesses left him and the pride. After roaming the expanses of Kruger, three brothers moved into the Timbavati and found an unattended piece of land south of Shabili territory. They have not crossed the invisible line into the old lion's turf. Not yet. The brothers are four years old. They are strong and confident. Every week, they kill a buffalo. Their constant success in hunting attracts the attention of the three lionesses that left the old Shabili male. The bravest one tests the brothers. It's a very bold move. 
It's the brother's kill, and as an outsider, she has no right to it. Submission is key. Getting in with these strong brothers will bring a prosperous time. Boldly, she moves in. Right under one of the brothers' nose. By morning, two of the sisters are still feeding. And there is a third lion with them, a young male, the oldest sister's son. His presence at the kill could jeopardize his mother and aunt's future relation with the coalition of males. By being here, he is taking a dangerous chance. The brothers return. The young male moves away before they can attack him. The brothers claim their kill. The sisters' time at the carcass is over. They now settle for some scattered bones, which they take a safe distance away from the brothers. One of the males keeps an eye on them. The young male hasn't moved far, but long term, if he stays, he will be killed because he is a male intruder on the brothers' land. He is a threat to their authority. They must chase him away. The brother stops the chase. This time, he is lucky to get away with just a bloody scratch. The young male knows his time here is coming to an end. Out there, every hectare is owned by lions more powerful than he. Their territories are clearly defined, forming a giant puzzle where each piece slots into the other on level ground. But here, it's not that there is a more obscure lair that belongs to another cat, a more elusive character, but by no means less impressive than the lions.